Well folks, how are you all? Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're having a nail gun day. So this video is going to be all on gas gun repairs. Mainly pass load. There's a few different types on here. Got a roll, a tornado. This is actually a concrete nailer. Old type pass loads and the new type IM360 pass loads. Range of stuff, all needing repaired. So I'm going to do one big video on gas guns. Mainly it's going to be the 360s because there's a heap of them things on. A few of the 350s and then just these two guns. So we'll start off in the new stuff. Leave the pass loads to litter. And we'll leave that one to litter. And we'll start with the roll plug. Now, somebody's been in this already. That's just the back cover for the fan and the filter. Roll plug gas, and she's full. That's coming out. Let's see what's wrong with this yoke. So, ready to go. And we have a fan. One shot wonder. Right, full ton of gas, but she only shot one nail. But as you hear at the end, whenever I pull that away, it doesn't sound right. Hear the difference? Plunger's not going on the whole way, or coming back the whole way, be more accurate. She's plunging on, but she's not coming out fully. So there's something jamming it up inside. So, strap her down, see what's going on. And this is a different layout to the last time. I must have changed this gun a little bit. But parts shouldn't be all that different. Generally, when they change these gas guns, they just change the bodies a little bit. So that looks fairly the same there. Not much difference in that. That could be one of the problems. O-ring is completely dry. But she's clean enough. And that's dry. Couldn't be that simple. So she's plunging back fully now. Seems okay. Even here, bone dry. It's not damaged. Smooth enough. There's not much of a shoulder on it either. Housing's not damaged. I would say this has just been recently serviced. I don't think there's much need to take this apart anymore. Just check the spark. Just check here. No, no spark. So there is something wrong.
So this leads just for your motor. And this here is for your spark. Only one spark. That's not good. So the problem's inside. Now, the problem with this, as far as I'm aware, is the actual spark unit or spark generator isn't actually available separately in this gun. You have to buy the actual handle unit on its own, which can be expensive and can be hard to get. So we'll see what we can do here. But this gun is basically just a Senko gun. Senko or T-Jip. They use the same parts. But is this the same as the modern ones now? You know, anything similar to this. Right. So, the raw part not available. You can buy the handle, but nobody seems to have it. But this is the same gun as the actual Senko gun and the T-Jip and a few others as well. So, looking up the Senko number, you can get this part separately. But they have to come back to me on a price and availability. So, can't do anything with it yet till we know if we can get it and what price it is. As for the older guns... This is the older roll gun, it takes the NICAD battery, same one again, but this is a boss stitch. But it's a different spark unit, can't use that on this, different battery connectors, and a completely different setup. So, using an old one's not an option, because I've only got the old NICAD guns, don't have one of these new lithium type ones, so that's all I can do for this thing for now. Just box it up and wait. Might be good news or it might be bad news. So it's not the actual o ring that's a problem in the grease because it's actually not running. Never have it to smavel to, it'll shoot one nail still and it'll only spark once and not spark a second time unless you pull the battery out. So problem is that spark unit and a bit of grease will help free it up but for now all I can do is wait now the next one up is a tornado this is a concrete nailer to be honest a wee bit like the other ones it's a cheaper brand no real parts available for it it's normally made by somebody else now this one, to be honest, this Tornado is a cheaper gun. Generally, they're very low price guns. Sometimes you even get them free if you buy so many nails. Generally, you can actually get them free sometimes, or at least you used to, with some brands of nails. If you bought enough nails, they sometimes give you a gun. Don't know if they still do that now, but that was the way with these. So this one, more than likely not be able to get the parts for, unless you find out the original manufacturer and get parts from them. But because they're normally so cheap, it mightn't be worth doing that. This one starting. The customer said it was jammed, so we'll see if it actually fires here first. Yeah, 
It's not only firing, it is actually shooting nails. So the question is, why did he send it on? Time to ring him and find out. Right, he actually said this was a nail jam. It's not the guns jammed. He says there's an actual nail jam at the top. No nail jam on there. She's clearly firing, unless there was just something stuck in the head of it. I've actually just shot it out by testing the gun. That's clear. And that's clear. And it's not unusual. I nailed the break. Sometimes the head can be left behind or something. But in this here, because it's a concrete nailer, we fire with quite a bit of force, so it's hard to actually keep that nail jammed on. That pin will go through the nail, no problem, if it's still on there. Sometimes they can shoot two nails, but it's a little bit difficult, unless you put on the wrong type of nail. But that's fine. It's totally clear. I don't think there's anything wrong there. She's up, magazine cleared, ready to go. That was a simple fix. No fix at all. Nail jam, what can you do? That's all you can do. Ready to go. Right. Next up was the first of the IM350s. Now this was an old gun. 1998 this one was made. And this This has not been used in years. Oh my god. What's going on here? 2009. So this has been lying up for 14 years. And it looks it. What am I going to do with this thing? Oh, somebody must be just taking a hand here. Rusted solid. I don't know if I can do anything with this. This is just, this might be a bit too far gone. That one came out too. These here bolts are actually onto a brass insert and the plastic. And if they're too tight, they just strip out the insert, or strip out the plastic housing. And the nut just actually spins around inside the housing. Yeah, they're holding so far. This is a long shot. Chances of fixing this one are slummed on. I suppose you have to have a wee chance anyway. Have we look and see if we can do anything. I'm actually sheared off, don't come loose at all.
I've got the oxide. Look at that. What am I going to do with that? Seriously, it's just been sitting at the bottom of a pond. We'll check the vitals first. Spark unit, motor, control board. Or the molded circuit board, rather. And if they are still good, we'll give it a chance. That's if this thing comes apart. Does and just not come out there. It's not giving up without a fight, anyway. Sheared off. Webs on it. Bolt's holding everything up now. That was a bit of work. I just have to cut off the top and draw it out a little bit. There we go. What are we going to do with this? Right, motor doesn't sound good. Fan's bent. Everything is seized. Corrosion is all the way into these wee plastic feet. I don't know about this. Tan still moves, mind you. And the inside still moves. So, if this works, we might be able to fix it. There's no spark or no motor. I'm not going any further. Because this is just just a tad bit beyond. I 
no spark, no motor, and no light. Wait. Because these ones are the worst. The old type one, don't even have to take that off. And them screws, that's two separate pieces. The modern ones are one piece. Like this might just be corrosion. Spark. Spraying them off. We do. Sounds a little bit rough, but it's running. So sadly, we're going to try and fix this. Try that as right. Try and put as little into it as possible as well. Is the fan straightened? Yeah, no matter what, I'm gonna have to get under this. See if we can get onto it first. That's if it comes out. Well, that settles that water stem where it is. Dry, but she's running.
Yeah, our jam dump. One, two. Press them as well. Gas stem adapter, that's okay. Cosmetics this side don't matter. It's this side here. And along here we have to clean. This o ring definitely needs a clean. So let's even stone one piece. That o-ring now costs 21 euro. So fixing this can be expensive now. Have to get that a clean. Do what we can on this side. Clean out this here. Everything else should be alright. Maybe clean that out a wee bit. Now. See if we can even get onto this side. First off these steel pins. Tap them down. That one slack. And that one opens. So does that. So you're a paper gasket holding two chambers together. That should be alright. Might have to go under the reed valve. The oil that would have been on the side, this side, has actually kept it good. So all the exposed areas that are actually corroded. That there's a steel C clip, internal C clip. They can rust like mad. If the inside was getting exposed to moisture, that would have rusted. A little bit of rust on the steel rings, but they're still opening and closing. Might get away with just cleaning them instead of replacing. Again, this can be an expensive o-ring to replace. That one looks okay. And they get this edge as well. Actual bump stop down in here, this rubber bump stop. The pan actually bounces off. That can perish as well. Become hard and brittle. But that's not too bad. Might get away with that. Everything else just needs a clean. So let's get the cleaning. Not off my start cleaning a pass load nail gun with a wire brush.
get all the surface stuff off first. And we'll work our way over to the parts washer. Don't go too mad on here. That's still only aluminium. That's the seat, the soaring, so don't wear that away too much. Obviously, I'm not going to go mad cleaning this. Get it working, and that's it. Doesn't need to be spotless. This is only just to free it up. Look at the amount of corrosion off of that. I've never seen anything as bad as this one. Before I go to the parts washer, just check this reed valve. but it's alright. Give that a clean down too. Clean this housing. Right, wash this out. Right, that's them clean. Or as clean as I'm going to get them anyway. Now it's time to put it all back together again. Stick out on first so I don't forget. Everything else is still good. We sponge pads for packing out the battery contacts. They haven't disintegrated or anything. Surge is a bit ready to go. Plenty of oil on it this time. So it doesn't crude up again. God knows how long it's going to lie again. If this boy's only using us for a little while.
there with Loctite as well. Make sure these don't come out. I do hope this boy still has batteries for this thing. So it's just left under the body only. No batteries on it. But he was looking to replace with genuine password batteries. Genuine password ones are now 125 euro a piece. So I hope it doesn't need batteries for this. The service might be very expensive, but batteries will cost quite a bit. This o-ring was okay. This one, not so much. A little bit of a shoulder on that o-ring. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Sound a little bit rough. There's not much we can do about that. The bronze bushings inside the actual motor housing itself. Sometimes pop off these wee covers, put a wee dab of grease into it. This one doesn't want to come off. There's no point in breaking that and getting more dirt into it. Just leave it as is. As the gun's running, oil will eventually seep onto here anyway and help lubricate it, but it's not going to take away that wear. It's worn, but it's not worn out. It might be a bit noisy, but it'll still run. 
wouldn't actually be worth changing the whole motor just for a little bit of noise. So that's her ready. didn't drill out this hole here for this here screw just gonna have to leave it as is it's only actually for the cable clamp anyway it should be alright Sure we're actually working up until now. Nice one. Sure, it's plunging correctly. Sometimes it's pouring up in here, get pinched. So make sure she's in correctly before you put on this cover and bolts. One of these missing this steel ring. So that one needs to go in there. One new bolt. Follow the original filter. Can't refit that. Looking a lot better anyway. Last thing, tighten up these. Somehow I don't think this gas is going to be any good. Not from 2009 anyway. With a test tube of gas. The 
my own battery and we'll see if she works. But that for a surprise working like it should didn't think they would actually run but it did just shows you the power of a service lads one pass load am350 from 1998 this actually was rusted solid corroded like mad everything stuck together stripped cleaned freed up re-oiled put back together again with a new gas fit at the back and that's it i didn't change anything else didn't even change the o-rings or nothing one wee part one service the gun that was ready for the dump is up and running again that's a good start to the pass loads anyway now on to the first of the am360s the am360 ci lithium and this one's from 2017 i think actually all the ones out there i think there's five altogether to be done I think they're all from the same company. And the lads that took them in at the counter says there's a full description of what each of them needs. And this one says it needs fixed and serviced. Good description. Well, I suppose it's accurate. It needs not working, it needs fixed, and it also needs serviced. Right. Let's see what's wrong with it. Gas and nails in her and test her out. Lights anyway, it's a good start. Right, no motor. Need to get that sorted first, actually. Just check the simple thing first. Check the wiring. wired up and she's free enough yeah they were on And there's another problem. It's not hooked up to the gas. She's not gonna she's not gonna fire any nails like that. And that's become disconnected. No, I'm still not right. It's 
So it should start up whenever you hit this switch. If you plunge it down on the probe, it actually engages this lever, it starts this switch here. So it's not starting the motor. The motor's actually starting whenever I pull the trigger. Which ain't right. You need to start this one to start up the motor, and this one then engages the spark. So first of all, see if we can salvage the switch or do we have to change the spark unit. There's a new spark unit. It's going to be pricey. Sometimes, I mean sometimes, you can clean them out. off this excess try again yep and that I suppose now nah. trigger's gone so these come in two types a black and a red little black mark here so a black spark unit for this this is a red mark you need the red one clean it sometimes work but it only works if it's actually genuinely dirty on the inside because these aren't actually switches inside this is just another broken one inside of here is actually a little emitter and a receiver so instead of a mechanical switch making a contact, there's actually a little light emitter, probably UV, shiny light out, and a little receiver that picks it up. The only thing the switch is doing is blocking the light. There's a little bar across there. So now the light's shining, and that cannot receive it. The receiver's not receiving any light. It's off. See so on the switch then, there's a little step for letting the light across. Once it sees the light, it activates. That's actually what they're doing. There's no contact been made. It's a non-contact switch inside. So if I recover a little light, nothing happens. But once the light's be seen, the motor starts. The same with this one here. This one should be starting the motor. But it's still not doing anything. It's because the actual little receiver or the emitter has actually failed. And it's always the top one. Cleaning only works when it's actually dirt. On the actual emitter or the receiver. Dirt gets on there, it's going to block it and interrupt the light. Cleaning it out will fix it. As you see in this one, the green death. See how loose that is? And then we'll know near as loose. They're still snug. And these are moving around too much. So one of the connections is actually corroded broken away inside of here quite common so this one will actually be the same so only way to fix it is to replace that spark unit but at 150 euro is it going to be worth it plus service in this machine so you're going to nearly a 200 euro bill best thing to do instead of ordering anything put this to one side take in the next gun seeing as they all belong to the same fella anyway See what else we can fix if there's any other gun 
that's not worth fixing, take the parts out of that and fix this one. Or maybe a couple of guns might be faulty. The price of each part would be too expensive individually. Maybe it would be better off just to scrap one gun to fix the rest. So we'll leave this for now and we'll see what the other guns are like. Luckily with all these new fancy boxes, so storing them isn't a problem. Just make sure you get all the bits. And don't squash the fan. Next is another one. And a full description of what's wrong with it. Needs fixed and serviced. Good description. So this is actually the original. The first of the AM360s. The 2015 machine. With the removable filter. So this is actually a cover. Instead of just the whole back coming off. Had an actual filter inside. New ones now have the filter molded into this back cover. And this here. And this is all one piece. Well, I just didn't like this because the actual cover feels a bit flimsy. Starts wear moving around after a while and it becomes slack. Right, see what it's doing. We have power. Motor. Nails in her and just give her a test out, see if it does actually fire. Right, well that's working. He wants it serviced, that's fair enough. But I don't, don't know what he means by fixed. It appears to be working fine. Everything's going in and coming out. I don't think this actually needs repaired. Maybe he's just written fix and repair on everything. That's just the gas escaping from the wee gas regular inside. Right. Service it anyway. She's running. I don't think there's anything to actually repair on this. minor thing but still needs to be fixed a little ground wire it's just for static build up from the air moving across the gun builds up a static charging act like discharge and cook electronics so always better to have that there soldered on to ground the electronics this gun isn't even that bad See, these are all just left on for a service. And there's only a few that actually need to be fixed. A few need it fixed, so it's just better off to send the whole thing in, the whole lot in for a service as well. Sometimes these can fail, these gas regulators for electro valves. These new gas aren't like the old ones. There's old M350 gas. This actually has a little regulator built onto the top. So every time you buy a new gas, you change the regulator. This actually measures out the exact amount of gas you need to shoot each nail. So every time you press it on, it only lets out a certain amount. 
So every time you change the gas, you change the regulator. The new ones, even though these are more expensive, these cost what? 10 or 15 euro a tube. These can cost about 30 euro a tube. This comes with the regulator. This doesn't. This is just a top. These here just let all the gas out. They charge up this here electro valve regulator here. Once you plug it on, it charges up. This is what's actually measuring out your gas. As you can imagine, changing the regulator every time to reusing the old one over and over again. This eventually does wear out and need to be changed. What can happen is it doesn't let enough gas through. So, gun stops shooting basically. If you're not doing anything, sometimes you have to pump it twice to get it to shoot one nail. That's your regulator, the sweet electro valve. You need to replace it. Other times it can actually fail and start dumping the gas. So we know the gun's shooting. So this is alright for the amount it's putting on. And the gas is already installed. And it's still full. So we know it's not leaking the gas. Leaking one's worse. Sometimes you can tighten them up here. Put them the device and tighten these two halves up. It can sometimes fix it. But it's a short term fix. And at 30 euro per gas, if you leave these in, which you're meant to do, you can end up costing yourself more money if it keeps leaking gas again. You do not want to waste the gas in these here. You only get enough gas per box of nails. You actually don't get enough, actually. If you buy a box in 90s, the three gas that comes, you probably won't even shoot all the 90s. You're always going to have more nails than you have gas. But a 30 euro tube, at least, they're too expensive to buy on their own. Not something you want to waste. And if you keep taking the gas out every time you don't use the gun, you lose a lump of gas as well. So you're better off keeping this in the gun the whole time until it's empty to get the most gas out of it. But if this is leaking gas, you're wasting gas, so you have to replace it. This one, I'd say, is fine because the gun is shooting and it hasn't leaked any. Obviously, this is good and this is good. So I don't think this is going to need anything else. It's probably just going to be a service. can be tight this is the annoying one it's been a while since I serviced one of these two more sockets down in here but they're very deep and they're always as tight as these ones so it's very hard to get them slackened off Hardly even needs a service. This is fairly clean. But it's been left in for a service, so what can you do? Things look all right anyway. So there's the main thing, this little wire. Give the rest for a good wash out now and get it back together and oiled up. Right, that's it clean. I've got to oil it and rebuild it. There's 
nothing else wrong with this gun that I can see. There's one thing about servicing it, you get to see every component and check them all. But this all looks good on the inside. There's a big o-ring on the cylinder. There's a wee bit worn, a wee bit of a shoulder, or a flat spot. But it's not all that bad. This here one. So I might just leave that the way it is. It'll probably need to be changed the next time it goes on forest service, but for this time it should be okay. This isn't as critical anyway. It's mainly this one that goes over the cylinder head for the fan. And so that wears it all, it generally needs to be replaced. As well, there's a green tinge on these two different screws. This has been removed before, so when it's already had that off and cleaned the reed valve inside, I probably have to change one of the screws. But they've also used green Loctite to actually hold the screws in place to make sure they don't come out again. So that's already been done and cleaned out. I don't need to do it again. You don't want to be taking these screws out too many times because you're just weakening the aluminium housing. But eventually, you're going to be too slack and this will start coming loose on its own. So only do that when you need to. I'm not going to do the reed valve because the thing was actually firing fine. If you were shooting the gun, it wasn't firing in any nails and it wasn't taking the pan back fully. You'd need to clean out that reed valve. This one's firing fine. This o-ring should be fine. Just a slight shoulder on it or a slight flat spot. But nothing too major. Make sure you get the chamfered end pointed down toward the nails. Get your dust shield. That's all this is. It's just to help some of the dust not to get up inside the chamber. Just a little bit of oil in them o-rings to keep them good.
before we forget. Sort this out as well. Doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to hold. These actually have to go in the right way. This little notch here has to go into this wee cutout. It just has to sit like that. This hooks on from the bottom and clips on up here. That's it. Don't have any nails left here. Quick test, make sure we're good to go. And sir, reset and good to go. Give it a wee test now. Now the gas regular inside needs to be primed with gas, so the first couple of shots don't do anything. Normally in the third or fourth she'll start shooting. There we go. That's her, all cleaned up and ready for work. Now you did see to fix the gun, but I can't actually see anything wrong inside. So you just must have left that on for a general service along with the rest. So that's her fixed up and ready to go. First couple of shots and it normally throws out the excess oil. Just clean that off before you send it away. Makes it look a bit tidier. That's it. So next, I have to interrupt this nail gun video for a wee insta fix or an insta build actually. Customer is stuck for a wall chaser and needs one today. So I have to convert this 9 inch Makita GA40S into a wall chaser. A double blade grinder for cutting through walls for conjugate wiring and plumbing. So I need that. I don't need that. And I need a grinder. Now this is the heavy duty 9 inch Makita grinder. The 9040S. It's a 2400 watt grinder. As you probably noticed now technically this thing needs a 32 amp 110 plug because she's 2400 she technically has to have that there but nobody ever has a 110 volt box with a 32 amp socket on it unless you want the likes like 5 kV transformer nobody wants to be lugging one of them around a 16 amp plug on a 3.3 kV transformer will do the job so Makita don't actually supply the 32 amp because nobody wants it and just leaves it bare 
for you to fit your own. You can put on whatever you want then. Most people are going to put on the 16 amp. But she actually has two core, 2.5 cable. She has a heavier cable as well for the bigger motor. So what we're doing is we're putting an attachment onto this. The one that's been sent on this is a laser chaser. So this here is called a laser chaser. Normally they come as one complete kit attached to the grinder already. That's the way you buy them. They do a Hitachi version and a Makita. Same head, different machines and just different fittings for actually attaching them. But they do that themselves. Problem is, they have no Makita grinders left. We only buy them with the Makita grinder. That's the way we supply them because we don't supply Hitachi or Hikoki as it is here now. They have no grinder, but they do have the heads. They're sending us in the head. We can fit it to our own grinder. That's why I'm doing it today. Normally they come in fully kitted out already. So very handy setup if you are doing wall chasing. Generally wall chasers they're a lot smaller, a lot lighter, less powerful. Grand for smaller work for lighter blocks or bricks. But up around here in Ireland and that the smaller ones just won't really cut it especially for heavy duty kind of work. Blocks here are as hard as a hare's heart, especially when they go to the older ones. Blocks made of concrete and aggregate, the aggregate is very, very hard. Older houses, very, very tough to actually cut through, so you need a bigger machine. Modern ones from the last 20 years ago, there's actually a big massive scandal with it here now. The blocks are actually what you would call Weedabix blocks. No strength at all, they literally break away and crumble in your hand. There's thousands of houses here in Donegal alone falling down now because of bad blocks. So. They're not a problem, but because of that scandal, because of the blocks are so bad, they're actually overcompensating now. The modern blocks are even harder again, wild hard to cut through. So to deal with that, you need a heavier duty machine and a better setup. And this laser chaser is generally the better setup. Two blades go onto it. Take two blades, so you've got two tracks, then you just ch chisel out the metal. Then you can put them whatever you want, if you're putting them wiring or piping. That goes straight onto a concrete wall or the floor. So this is generally a better setup if you're doing a lot of work. So if you're doing chasing all day long, it's wild hard in the machines, wild hard in the motor. If you do happen to overload the machine and burn it out, you don't have to go and buy a whole new wall chaser at whatever price they are. Someone can be up to about a thousand euro. This here setup with the head costs about what 700, 750 euro, I think, not a hundred percent. But the grinder alone, if you burn this out. You can just then replace it for about 250 or 280, this big heavy duty one. So to fit this, fairly simple. Head fits in here, two holes for your handle either side, bolt onto this. Then you've got a sleeve as well for clamping it onto the grinder head. Rust extraction, cap for the top, bolts for bolting it on, and then shims in for packing out your blades. To fit it, couldn't be easier. Open up your head, drop on the sleeve, There's three wee ridges back here for a flat spot. That's what this goes on to. This wee flat spot on the ring stops the ring from being able to rotate. But to tighten it up with a grub screw here, you can access when it's closed. Drop that on, tighten her up, and you can drop this onto the head of the machine. Get her roughly lined up, put on your bolts. Same on this side. Dress down full. You can see she's closed on there now. No gap. And you can tighten up that sleeve to clamp it on tight to the grinder head.
I'm just going to set this up whatever way. The customer then can adjust it whatever way they like. Three blades go on. Whatever size of track you want to cut, you just put in whatever one of these shims you need to make up the gap. So this here is the extension for your thread to make it longer. So it'll actually take the two blades. You still need your original back flange. Throw that on first. Just threads onto the spindle. Our packer. Your first blade. Now these are diamond blades, and diamond blades actually have a direction meant to spin a certain way. That's turning this way. R1 the machine that tells you which way she's turning. So put it on the same way as the arrow. Them on. On the rest of the packers. And your last blade. Over cap over the end. Then the dust port then. Hooking up to your hoover. And lastly, from the grinder, you can fit your handle. You can have it that way, or if you want. If you're left-handed, you can have it on the outside. I'll just put it on the right-handed side for now, because it's easier to transport. Because it's the heavier duty Makita grinder, it has a swivel head, so standard grinder. Your switch is going to be in the wrong location. So this one, push on this lever and rotate the handle. So now, an easy to hold, heavy duty, 2400 watt twin blade wall chisser with a nice reliable 9 inch Makita grinder the GA9040 that needs to be the GA9040 the GA9020 is only a 2000 watt motor and it's not heavy enough for this kind of work you are using two blades and one they're only a 7 inch blade they're on a 9 inch so it's a wee bit easier that way but still 2000 watt motor is not big enough for this. You need 2400. You're just pushing it with a lighter machine. If you're doing a little bit of chasing, not a while lot, maybe for an hour or so, fair enough, you make it away. But if you're doing it all day, like this boy's going to be doing, you need a 2400 watt machine. And if you're running this for hours on end and it's getting hot, don't keep pushing it. If you're doing it with any machine, if the thing's getting hot from constant use, basically you need two. So if you're running this here for several hours, it gets hot. You can put it down, use the second one till this cools down and just keep swapping them back and forth. That goes for a wall chaser, a hammer, a drill, anything. The machine should never get hot. And if it does, you need to let it cool. So that's her. That is the Makita of a laser chaser head. And now, just for your view and pleasure, also stuck on a 32 amp plug. Just so we can give it a quick test out. Which is actually adjustable as well. You can set her 35 mil cut down to a 10 mil, so you don't have the whole of the whole blade. This just runs along the edge of the wall, cut as deep as you want. That's her. One Makita grinder with a laser chaser wall chasing head attached to it. If you're ever looking for a wall chaser and you want a good one, check them out. Laser chaser, get them on Makitas and Hitachis or Hikoki. I have to say, they are a very good setup, very good idea. Separate head, separate grinder. If you ever have any bother with the machine, take off the head, put it onto another one. Very good setup, very good longevity, great power great reliability 
you know, that's her. That's one ready for the customer. Now, back to the nail guns. This one needs fixed and serviced. Fair enough. Gas and this one and a battery actually, sorry. Supply the battery this time. It's handy when customers send it in. Especially when they're off brands like a T jip or something like that there, or a Senko. I don't have batteries for all of them, so if it's an oddball machine, make sure you send in a battery for me to actually test it. I do have the password ones, but still handy to get one just in case. So powering on. We have gas and we have nails. And we have a fan. The question is, does it shit? No. Right, this one seems like it needs to be fixed. Motor starting, doing everything she should, just not shitting. It says there's gas in this. And there's plenty of gas in the tub. And she's 2025 and it. I know it's not the gas because I can't actually smell it whenever I'm firing it. If you can smell the gas and it's not shitting, you know it's not the gas. She's actually putting it in through the gun. So, gas and maybe a spark in it again. Or the actual spark plug at the top is actually clogged up and the spark's going to the wrong location. We'll just see if there is a spark here first. It doesn't sound like it. Normally you can hear the actual click from the spark up here as it actually makes an arc across. Can't hear any click. So it might not be making a spark. See in this one, the actual air filter is molded onto the back cover itself. So to actually replace that air filter is a lot more expensive to buy the whole back cover. Now this, first we want to know, is it making a spark? Just pull that out. Put the battery back in. Go through the motions again. But keep an eye on the spark plug here. No. Not making a spark at all. Take that off. We'll go on side. does need a service it's not terrible but it does need a clean we'll just make sure this is doing the same as the last one Right, opposite way this time. Looks like either this trigger's gone, motor's starting like it should up here, but this button's not starting the spark. So either this trigger here is gone, the button, or the spark unit itself. Either way, I need the whole spark unit because these actual switches here are part of the spark unit. So this needs to be replaced. So it's two of those I need so far. So we'll have to ring the customer see if he wants to pay to get them replaced and serviced not much point in doing anything else with this one just yet 
It was wet until we rang the customer and see if he wants to go ahead of this. But before we ring him, we also look at the rest of the guns first in case anything else needs extra money. It was just a service and a few wee parts. It's grand. But if we get into 150 quid for one part, we'll have to ring the customer on it. So just throw it in here for now. Put it all together. Move on to the next one again. This one has its own gas. And it's in date, February 2024. And it's the older model again, or the original model. This one's actually 2014. 10 years old, this one. And this says it needs fixed and serviced. So, another full description of what it needs. See what it is or isn't doing first. Same as the older one as well, working, doesn't seem to be needing to be fixed, might just need a service. This one is looking a little bit worse, so maybe it is just a service. Check it out as we go along anyway, make sure there's nothing gone inside, but as is, I can't really see anything that needs to be fixed. Now two of those nails are shot, ended up sticking out, that's because the board I'm going to is actually full of nails, so probably just hit another nail when I was nailing onto it. Tight. Yeah, this one definitely needs a service. Look at the build up on that one. That o ring might need to be replaced. Bit of a flat edge on that. Now, what you don't want to be doing, if you do get a bunch of guns in, is swapping parts around willy-nilly. See that there? Mark red. The other spark units had a black tick on it. Can't interchange them. Everything in this gun is all marked red. So these electronics only match this here one. Not sure if it'll do any damage or not if you inter interchange them. But, wouldn't want to take the risk. If they're all red, keep them red. If they're all black, keep them black. You don't want to do damage to other things because all these parts are expensive. So don't be taking this out and trying it in the other gun to see if the spark in it is the problem. If you wanted to, you could test their motor on their, this gun here, but don't be changing the electronic parts around. Only test them, change them around and test them if they're all the same colour. So this is the red one. Obviously that must have been a better quality one. The last two are 2014 and 2015 and they're still running fine. Just a service needed.
stuff. Not his way. It's bent. That one's no, oh, it's bent too. I might replace them. A good example of why you need to service these IM360s quite often. They burn hotter. So the oil eventually burns away. Instead of having an oiled up piston inside, it ends up bone dry. No oil in there at all. Wash all this out, get ready to rebuild. That's it all cleaned out. Hell of a difference a service can make. Just shows you the dirt that can build up on it. Still clean underneath, but the black tar, dirt, grit, and oil start to build up, especially on this here. Because they were running a wee bit hotter, they do produce a bit of soot or tar that builds up on here. And the inside of the chamber. You can't always get the chamber one off. That's as much of it off as I can. I'm actually using thinners, paint thinners, to clean the inside of here. The o ring. This o ring here. The chamber it is worn, but not too bad. Same as the last one. The one for the fan, which is also a flat edge on it. So that will need to be replaced. A 20 odd quid. You really don't want to be replacing these too often. Get rid of that. I'll fit that one. Now, same story. Get her all lubed up and ready to go. Be nice and generous with the oil too. Because, like I say, it does burn away fairly easily. Leading this one's fine, it didn't break. Sometimes these steel rings the seal. There's any moisture exposing this here gun or any pass load of these can start to rust. It'll be very bad. The dirt and grit can build up on them. Very fine sanding blocks all you need. Just to give a put it on a flat surface, rub it with a flat sanding block, nice and fine one. That will take them up quite well. Not the actual channel in here. They're very badly gummed up. Take a Stanley knife. Use the flat edge and just run that across both edges of that channel. That'll remove most of the build up. Because you want them two seals nice and free to give a good seal inside the gun. Again, the chamfer side facing down towards the nails.
these steel pans, just give them a quick wee straighten on the vise. They should be fine. If they are stuck, they do sometimes break in half. If they break, you can just get an actual steel nail instead. Get a long washered steel nail, cut off the washered side, bevel the two ends and cut them to the right size. You'll do the same job as you actually buy in the pastel part. Taste of oil. As we catch here, goes to the bottom, and this one with the two e points on it goes to the top. That's her. One pass load IM360 original. Fully serviced. Maybe give it a quick test. Right, normally three pumps to prime that electro valve or gas regulator. Hopefully this time. There we go. Now, that's another one, ready to go. Just a service, doesn't seem to be anything actually wrong with it, just apart from the old o-ring. Just needs to be replaced. So, service and an o-ring, just for that one. And last one for this fella, is actually a T-Jip. And this one actually has a description, needs a firing pan. Right? Three green lights, and we have a fan. So what is this? This is a 16 gauge, is it? Yeah, 16 or 15 gauge straight brad nailer. So T up exact same as a Senko, or even raw plug as well, and a few others. So I'll see, it's wrong with this one. It says a firing pan, we'll just make sure first before we even test it. Normally whenever I get a gun on, especially if there's no description on it, I would just test it anyway. Put batteries and gas on it and give it a wee test out, see what happens. See what she's doing or not doing. But if it says it's got a broken pan, do listen, open her up and check. Sometimes they can break halfway up and be sitting at an angle. You go and shoot it then. You can shoot the pan out through the side of the aluminium housing or something. Or can score up and gouge the inside of the chamber. Don't go firing it if I think it has a broken pan.
hands down it should be sticking out down here Uh -huh. So it is a broken pan. It's all smashed down along the side of this. Right. Question is can we get a pan or do we have a pan? It's on here now, so we may as well service it also. Providing we can get this pan. I've not actually worked on one of these before. A few T jup roofing guns and a few of the stiplers. That's about it. So this is a new one. that on there for now. Okay, and it reminds me of a Hikoki gun actually. Like an old Hitachi. Else looks okay. No. Do we have or can we get one of these? It's actually damaged down here too. It's looked like that broke a while ago and they've kept on using it. Yeah, that chamber's a little bit scored. A little bit there. But not too bad. What we'll do is take out the bump stop. I'll just clean that. Sometimes there's bits of the pun left, or bits of nail or whatever, get embedded on the bump stop. Bump stop. What's left there? We put in a new pun. That'll start digging on and destroying the aluminium base of the pun. So clean that out as well, and we'll see if we have one of these. Right, on to a new one. This is from a different customer. This is the older AM three fifty stroke ninety. The other two pass loads as well, the um, 360s, parts is ordered for them, customer says, go ahead. So we'll have to wait for them to come on. This one, customer says, it's not working. We've got lights, we've got a motor, we've got gas. Another nail. Well, that is definitely working. I wonder.
wonder why she wouldn't be working sometimes. 2008. Sure, she's only 16 years out of date. How can people not check the sample stuff first? So that'll run for a little while. And every now and again it's going to miss fire. Because the gas is just out of date. Plus, that's just about empty. What do you do? It's not that dirty. So I don't think it's just been sent on for a service. It's definitely not dirty. Barely a mark on it. Normally up here in the fins. It starts getting coated in oil and all the dirt starts sticking, sticking to it there. And this is a new probe as well. I don't think this needs anything. I don't want to go and service it if it doesn't need a service. And again, no name nor phone number. Let's see if we can figure out who owns this one. Right, not so bad. Customer says it's actually just been lying up for years. It's at least 10 years it's been lying in the shed. Just wants it checked over before he goes and buys batteries and a charger for it. Thinks his charger's gone, but his batteries are definitely gone, but he wants to see if the gun is any good. So we know it works. We'll just check out the back. Mainly just to see if there's oil on it. A little bit dry. Just put a bit of oil in there. It's actually not that dirty. She's fairly clean. And the same as here. Rings okay. What I will just do is just give this head a clean, just in case there's any dirt up in the spark plug up in here, interfering with the spark. We'll get the back of this oil clean, and we'll oil it, put it back together again, and that'll do the job. Right. So this is just basically a quick wee money service. It's the type of thing you're meant to be doing with your own guns, anyway. Piston and the chamber. Help that free up a wee bit. That's a lot better there. And quickly clean out the head, re oil the o ring. these older ones especially o-rings feel wild wild slack that is how they're meant to be they are a slack fit they are too tight if you get a copy one that's too small actually the thing runs very very badly and i also just cleaned out this chamber here just where it's meshing onto so we'll give that a wee bit of an oiling as well and that should do some difference between that and the first one. Both of them supposedly stored for 10 or 15 years in a shed. Shows you with a little bit of moisture and your shed's going to do to a gun. 
first one must have had a drop or condensation or something because it was totally rusted up. This one was obviously drier. Especially these older guns always plunge it first before you put the back cover on because this o-ring here can snag on the teeth as you're putting it on. Just make sure that's seated correctly first. Not that it's a big deal, it just saves you taking the cover off again. Now, get rid of his gas. It's not completely empty, but he starts using that again, 2008, and it starts firing intermittently, it automatically just assume that's a gun, so I generally don't send them back again when they're completely out of date like that. So test this, make sure it works. Copy batteries. That's her. Ready to go. Nothing really wrong with it. Just checked over. A quick wee clean in the back. And that is the downside of copy batteries. They're twice the actual capacity of a genuine passload battery. Very good for running. But they never stay in right. The clip just never stays correctly. So as you're running it. Generally, it starts to clip out, shuts down the gun, or else falls out completely and breaks. So you're buying them, make sure you wedge something on to stop it dropping out. They're good in that they're more than half the price of the genuine and twice the capacity, but they just never stay in like the proper ones. And sometimes they're not actually beveled at the top either, like this one. So now if you drop them on, the two battery contacts. Run over with an angle to let the battery in. The genuine one have a chamfer on either side so that it allows the battery to slide in. The copy ones like this one have just a sharp edge so whenever they go on they can snag on the battery terminal and bend it. Which is a bad thing because that battery terminal now costs about 80 euro. So you don't want to be doing that. You get any of these copy ones and there's a sharp edge here. Just take a hammer. Give it a couple of taps to flatten it out a little bit. Or else actually file it a little bit as well, just to get a nice chamfer to it. Apart from that, they're decent enough. Do my job anyway. That'll do her. Now, back to these. The customer says go ahead, and the parts are on. So we're going to get these two pass loads, these AM360s, fixed up here now. Get them all stripped down fully and get them cleaned out. Service back together again. And we'll replace these spark units. Get rid of them ones. Get rid of that. her ready to go now I also opened up that reed strip as well because once I actually started cleaning out the inside it was very black down around the vents 
actually opened that up and cleaned the reed valve as well just in case she was actually quite dirty so I had it left it alone and finished servicing it and started the gun up it could have been intermittent firing so that reed valve might not have been closing correctly but she's sorted now O-rings in these as well are fine, there's no flat spots, so don't need to replace them. Just make sure you have the steel plate and this wee leg to the bottom where the gas nozzle is because you can actually put this bottom on upside down you only realize when you actually try to put the gun together
give her a quick test. Now, will she go on two or will she go on three? One, two, three. That's her on pass load. I am 360. A full service and a new spark unit. It's a dear enough repair, but it is a 2017 machine. So it's got around six years worth of work done. But now, with that there, hopefully she gets another six. That's one done. Now for the next one. Now, on to the last pass load. This one again, needs a service. Now, as for the T jip nailer, that's looking less likely to be fixed. T jip is a subsidiary of Senko nailers, both one and the same. Can't get parts for the T jip stuff, but you can get the parts for the Senko. We stop supplying single parts or stop fixing single tools because we cannot get the spare parts. So we'll sell you the tools, but you can't get the parts. Last time I tried to get spare parts from Senko, I was told point blank, Ireland's just too small a market for Senko. They're not going to bother sending spare parts over here. Still sell the tools, but they wouldn't sell the spare parts. So Senko stopped for a while. But they were around here a few months ago with another one of our Irish suppliers for spare parts and they are now starting to supply spare parts in Ireland through this supplier. Lots of promises made they were going to get all this sorted out. The market for spare parts is opening up again. So anything you needed or anything I needed simply contact the supplier and they'll get it out to me double quick. So they're making a big massive turnaround and they're getting everything up and running for the Irish market. I've rang my supplier four times now about them TJA parts or Senko parts and they told me Senko won't even answer the phone. They've emailed them three times, getting no reply. they phoned them, won't even answer the phones. So in other words, Senko still does not supply parts over here. So it looks like the TJA won't be fixed. I have a Senko nailer here that won't be fixed and a Senko air gun that also won't be fixed. I was promised spare parts of them. I was promised they could be got. Obviously they can't. But obviously the main office for Senko doesn't want to supply them over here. So they're dead in the water. So this is looking like the last nail gun off the lot. Bone dry as usual. Right, start washing. Start with the main thing spark unit. Straighten them wires out a wee bit so they run on there a bit easier. That's for the back. That and this.
will do you no harm as well to make sure you feed plenty of oil onto it as you're running these machines. At the end of the day, open up the back, put a little bit onto that o-ring and just drop a little bit onto that chamber because it does burn away the oil awfully quick, these guns. Whenever they run dry then, it starts causing all sorts of problems. Keep the oil topped up as well. Thing I did forget, a little dust shield for the back. That'll do. Two thousand twenty-five. Gas is okay. We have battery. We have gas. Let's go 
really test out Nice one. I've still got a password sorted anyway. Two of the AM360s with a service and a new spark unit. Now, that ain't a cheap repair to be quite honest. That spark unit plus a service, labour and VAT all in. €230 Euro for that there. Not a cheap repair by any means. But if you want to keep the gun running, it's the only way to get it fixed. Dear piece of kit, doesn't matter if it's a new gun or the old gun, they always were expensive. That's her anyway, but a third of her cost of buying a new one, so it's still worth it at that. Now, these two aren't looking good. These are all going to be coming from Senko for parts. Like I say, Senko's not even answered the phone for my supplier. Can't get any word on availability or if they're ever going to come on. Can't even get in contact with Senko. So no go on these at the moment. I'm not going to box them up and send them out just yet. I'm going to leave them for another little while and see if they come back to us at all. But at the moment, can't get parts. If things change, we'll let you know. For now, they're just going to go on the shelf for the long haul and see if anything comes on. That's all I can do for them for now. So that's the end of this video. So, thanks for watching folks, as always, hope you've enjoyed watching them, and taking something at least from them. But for me, for now, that's her. Just a wee like and a follow, these are liking them. Cheers!